Corsair Raptor K40 keyboard and M45 mouse are designed to provide best-in-class features and performance for gaming. Click now to learn more. The Fantex Enthu Primo. You guys have been asking me for this for a while, and here it is. We're going to start with packaging. It comes in a box, which you may or may not have expected. It's also got some nice, soft, closed-cell foam. Because of how heavy this case is, and especially how heavy it's going to be once it's laden with hardware, like, man, this thing's heavy. I wouldn't have minded seeing a little bit thicker foam, like what Silverstone does on some of their higher-end cases, but it should pretty much arrive in one piece, even with a system inside, in most cases. Let's start with the accessories. Inside the little accessory box that's included, you get a radiator bracket, so this allows you to install up to a dual 120 millimeter radiator on the side if you're willing to remove the hard drive cages. Don't worry, there will still be SSD mounts. You also get a nice little kit full of screws. It's got little compartments for all the different kinds of screws that come with the case. And actually, it's amazing how many different kinds of screws are used on this case. It actually has more than the 10 compartments worth of different screws, which I discovered when I undid the this thing right here, the reservoir mounting bracket that was actually inside in the first place because it was unfortunately useless. If you have a gaming grade graphics card that's sort of a normal length, then it's going to interfere with that anyway. The good news is that there are other places that you can mount your radiator without any difficulty. Finally, finally, we've got the rest of the accessories here. We've got two little foam pieces in case you want to install a second power supply in the Enthu Primo, and then some zip ties as well as two more Velcro straps in addition to the ones that are inside the case. So let's start with the outside. The front of the case, actually, I didn't really like it that much before it was powered on and before it had an entire system in it. It's got a gorgeous brushed aluminum and finish. Now, this is a bit of a double-edged sword because it looks great out of the box, but if you get fingerprints on it, it can stain over time, so just make sure you're careful with it. It has a blue LED strip illuminating not only the front, but also the top, and then if you remove the front cover, it's actually got two blue LED fans that give a very pleasing glow to the front of the case as well. The great news about all these LEDs is that you can actually toggle them on and off with a switch that's built into the front of the case. You've also got an extremely solid five and a quarter inch bay door up at the front that conceals five five and a quarter inch bays. It has a very solid feel to it and closes with a satisfying thunk because it is magnetized. So quite like the front of the case. The last thing to note about the front is that that removable piece that gives us access to those fans has a uh, removable cleanable fan filter that's got kind of a complex design to it. You would just, I guess, run the whole thing underwater as opposed to removing the actual filter from the front piece because the way it's constructed allows the front uh, bottom air vents, like the kind of the side front bottom air vents to intake air and still have it be filtered in addition to any air that's coming through the front of the case. Which brings us to the top, which is also gorgeous, you know, brushed aluminum finish, two USB 2.0 ports, two USB 3.0 ports that have little rubber, you know, covers on them that will get lost immediately, power reset switch, as well as that LED control switch that controls not only the LEDs on those front fans and the LED strip, but also can control additional LED fans in the case. There's actually a bunch of leads. I believe there's four additional leads inside the case and it can control, control your internal case lighting because it has a Molex connector that it powers as well. So you could have your interior lighting and you could hook up pretty much whatever you want to it and have the old thing turn on and off with the push of a switch. Speaking of pushing, we can remove the top fan filter just like that. Go ahead and clean that or do whatever it is you need to do with it. This also reveals a ton of space at the top for fans and radiators. You can do up to three 140 millimeter fans or four 120 millimeter fans and because there's enough clearance between the top of the internals and the top of the and the bottom of this fan filter you can actually do a push-pull configuration with a quad radiator in here quite comfortably. In fact the Enthu Primo is a water cooling a water cooler's wet dream so to speak because of all the options that are available in it. So let's go around to the right hand side where we find not a whole lot of much of anything. There's two 120 millimeter fan mounts. These are mostly only going to be used if you do decide to install that optional bracket, or I shouldn't say mounts, I mean two you know holes, two ventilation holes. There's also a ventilation hole for the power supply intake. The power supply only goes in, well one of the power supplies only goes in one way in this case. On the left hand side we have two little windows, one that reveals a Fantax logo and that's pretty much about it. Other than that it's just kind of a, a stealthed uh, panel.
panel there across the three and a half inch drive cages. And the, the cool thing about that Fantex logo is you can actually replace it quite easily. It's held on with screws from the back side, so you can put them whenever you want. And then a nice large sort of uh, tinted window that gives you a nice look at your not your power supply. Ah yes, it has a bit of an unusual internal layout, so all it really shows you is your motherboard as well as your graphics cards and that kind of cool stuff. So the slightly different internal layout, let's go ahead and, oh boy, this thing's heavy. I'm gonna try and move it around a little bit here. So you can see that the power supply is actually vertical. That's what allows you to install up to two power supplies in the case. You can also put a 120 or 140 millimeter fan here at the back, should you so desire. There's another reservoir mount here, thankfully. So that original one, that wasn't very good. We don't have to use that. Also at the back, we've got either a 120 or 140 millimeter fan mount, and you can go ahead and slide that up and down as needed. The last thing I do wanna show about the outside is, oh, wow, it's heavy. Ouch, got my finger. Even more removable fan filters. So you go ahead and click these ones down here on the bottom and they slide out from the side. This reveals, ah yes, you can have up to a triple, or rather quadruple 120 millimeter uh, radiator mounted in the bottom as well. So that gives you two 480 millimeter rads, both with filters and potential for awesomeness. Of course, you would have to remove the three and a half inch drive cages if you wanted to do that. Now, the fans that are included with the case, not the greatest, you know, workmanship ever. They have a bit of a, a, quite a bit of flex to them. They don't feel like the greatest thing, but Fantex does include five of them, which is pretty generous considering the case is large, feature rich, and cost $249.99. I don't usually mention pricing, but cases don't change much, so there you go. Um, the good news about them is that, especially with the included fan controller, they are quite quiet. So I was overall pleased with the included fan quality and quantity. So there's two 140s in the front, one 140 in the bottom, a 140 in the back, and finally a 140 in the top. This is kind of funny. I have an H100i that I've managed to install in the system. So there's another 100 and sort of slightly less than 120 millimeter gap here. And then there's two 120s over here in the five and a quarter inch base. There's a 140 here. Managed to install that without even removing any of the stock fans. So we still have all of the original air cooling, which is sort of funny to me. The manual is great because it gives you a couple of useful matrices. There's one for uh, radiator installation, so it gives you a little checklist of where all the different radiators fit and all that good stuff. It also gives you a little uh, matrix for all the different places you can put fans. So while it's not as good as someone like Silverstone's manuals where they actually walk you through the entire process of building in it, I'd say it's complete enough to give you a good idea of what you are up against. Now I say up against, but experienced builders really won't have that much of a challenge. The side panels are unexceptional on the inside, except you can see that the one with the two 120 millimeter vent spots on it is actually blocked by default. So you can go ahead and pull that off if you do decide to mount fans or a radiator there. Um, now why it's not challenging is because they actually do a lot of the wiring for you. So we're gonna go ahead and move around to the back. Check this out. I love the way that Fantex has done most of the cable management out of the box. So they've got their nice little Velcro ties, which are all down here, all down here for the eight pin, across here for the bottom where you're gonna run your USB 2, your front panel audio and all that good stuff. And they've also got a ton of the other little standard hoop and look loop tie off things um, that go along with the zip ties that they've included. It actually gives you a ton of cable management options, but I didn't undo most of it. All I really did was I took the fans out of here and then I routed them all here to the integrated fan controller. This can support up to 11 fans that are all controlled via PWM and it actually works incredibly well. More on that in a little while. So I routed all the fans there. I routed my 24 pin, my four PCI Express connectors up here. There's a reason I installed two graphics cards in the system. I wanted to see if there was going to be enough clearance here to be able to run two graphics card worth of PCIe cables and a 24 pin and USB 3 and all that stuff. And and there was, and then I just um, doubled back with a couple of these ones to where they needed to go, and that was pretty much it. Other than that, cable management is a breeze in here, and even though I didn't do a great job of managing things uh, you know, carefully up the side here, or laying things flat and, and utilizing the back of the motherboard tray better, it looks incredibly clean, and it looks great from the front. Now, this is something that I sometimes feel really good about and sometimes don't feel as good about, something that I, I 
sometimes bothers me about Corsair's cases is that they don't leave much room for flexibility. They come meant to be wired a certain way and everyone's build will look great in it, and that's fantastic, but everyone's build will kind of look the same. Fantex has taken that approach with a lot of the pre-wiring, but they haven't gone too far down that path. You have a lot of options. You can actually remove the three and a half inch bays here. You can actually remove the five and a quarter inch bay, although you will need to drill out some uh, rivets if you want to do that. And you can just fill the bloody thing with radiators. You can, uh, you can put your power supply on the other side. You can still do things differently. It's just that I generally wouldn't really recommend it because the way that they have it wired up here is quite nice. Installing the power supply was like the easiest thing ever. You just kind of drop it in there. There's a lot of space to work with next to the power supply here, unless you install a pump on the included pump anti-vibration rubber pad, which is awesome. It happens to have the correct holes for the Lang D5 or SwiftTech MCP6055, which is my personal favorite pump. Nothing else really matters to me. It's great to see that included. There's also more room for a reservoir over here, should you so desire, if you're going to remove those three and a half inch cages. Installing drives is a snap, actually. It's a kind of a really smart little system here. So they have two little nubbins here and here, and then they have these wings that come out. See, these snap out, and then what you do is you just put the drive on, click them into place. There's no bending, there's no flexing, there's no goofy stuff like that. And once you put it in, it actually feels very, very solid. The one thing that doesn't feel that solid about the three and a half inch cages is the entire cage assembly itself. They've made it modular, so you can actually move it closer to those two 140 millimeter fans at the front to give yourself some more space over here. You can take them out entirely, but I feel like it could have used a little bit more reinforcement. The other drives that I installed, I put a single two and a half inch SSD in to one of their little uh, removable brackets here. Now these little two and a half inch brackets can take up to two drives each, but I think in, in a practical, sort of, unless you're buying adapters, so you're gonna need to make sure you use straight cables, you might have trouble putting two drives in them, so uh, beware of that. And then the other thing I didn't like about these was the fact that they don't screw in in any way. There's nice little rubber grommets that they go ahead and clip into quite nicely, and mostly you're gonna be installing SSDs in there, so even if in shipping uh, a drive came flying off and rattling around, it would probably be fine. If you ever put a hard drive there, or if the SSD managed to like come loose and whack something, I don't know. I, I don't like things that don't don't at least have the option to screw in. The cool thing about this in terms of options is that you can go ahead and you can install it here on the back of the motherboard tray if you want, rather than over there. So you've got two brackets with up to three different places that you can install them. Moving around to the front, the amount of space in this case is just very obvious and apparent. I went with a sort of air-cooled and then all-in-one liquid-cooled configuration, but you can do pretty much anything with this thing. In fact, there were a couple of really cool build logs that I found on Linus Tech Tips forum as well as overclock.net, uh, one where the, uh, the bloke actually put rads in the bottom, front, and top, and then managed to hide all of the tubing without even being able to see it. And then the one on the Linus Tech Tips forum was quite exceptional as well, and it shows the creativity that this case does allow. The fact that there is adequate cable management room for up to four graphics cards. They do have eight PCI slots in the back. And then the fact that you can put an EATX motherboard in here. These are all very, very positive things. And uh, I think they've managed to make room for all of that without having it be full of empty space. Space, like something like the Cosmos 2 um, tends to be. In the bottom here, by default, you can put a nice thick radiator or you can actually even slip a fan in the back here if you want. And I think that's pretty much all there is to say about it. Toolless five and a quarter inch drive cages, lots of cable management, grommets, and that's, that's pretty much it for the inside. So. Um, cooling with air is actually very awesome, and this is uh, actually, it's time to do my little demo here. So check this out, guys. Um, the fact that it includes that PWM fan controller is really cool. So I'm going to go ahead, I'm going to intentionally let my CPU overheat by undoing two of the thumb screws here. Now, uh, this isn't something that I necessarily recommend. You can hear the system in my lab. It's running very quietly right now. I'm going to go ahead and detach this, and without providing any additional power to the adapter on the back to that fan controller, um, and you should check the Fantex website to make sure that your motherboard supports that, I can pull this off and listen to this. The entire case works harder to keep that CPU cool, and now when I go ahead and pop the block back on there, the entire thing is going to quiet down again. This is an outstanding little feature, and then the, uh, the LED control is also fantastic as well. Overall, what do I have to say about the Enthu Primo? 
Very solid case. Considering the price, the build quality is what I would consider to be what you would expect. You can see where they've spent money on things like the gorgeous aluminum finish on the front and the top, um, as well as on the tooling and the design that enables them to bring all this functionality into what is a fairly reasonable size when you consider how much stuff you can put into it. I don't personally like the weight and I find it a little bit difficult to move around, but for some people that'll be much less of a concern. Love the flexibility that it affords. I think the looks are going to be a take it or leave it depending on how you feel about the, you know, the, the two tiered, like kind of stepped look to the top as well as the kind of busy and yet black and monolithic looking front. But overall, I quite like it. I think it looks much better in person than it is, than it does in pictures and videos. And it looks much better once you've actually got a rig in it and you can appreciate the efficient use of the space. So overall, definitely a thumbs up for Fantex on this one. And I look forward to seeing the Enthu Duo or whatever more enthus we might get in the future. Guys, like this video if you liked it, dislike it if you disliked it. Check out the link in the video description. I talked about the price in this video, so you don't need that to find out the price, but you might want to discuss the video somewhere other than the YouTube comments, you know, wild west that they are. And as always, guys, don't forget to subscribe to Linus Tech Tips for more unboxings, reviews, and other computer videos. Thank you.